Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 359 of the Comedy Film Nerds podcast. In a disclosed location. Studio location. Yes. We know where this is. <laughs> it is the All Things Comedy uh, location, which is in Bill Burr's bunker. Yes. Uh, <laughs> he is a survivalist, and we're here. The apocalypse has happened, and mm -hmm. so we're going to record until... As long as there's electricity, we can keep going. <laughs> It's a solar-powered freak zone. Wow. Uh, so how about them Oscars? How about them Oscars? We should, mm -hmm. let's introduce our guest. Sure. Should you bring up that there's a camera first? I don't know. Can I run my own goddamn show? Or can <laughs> well, we, I'm can just we saying. Just... Well, you guys are rookies at this. I don't know if you, uh, I don't know if you. You didn't know the, num the number of the show. I do now. Okay. I said it before the thing. All That's right. how we do every show. It's a tradition with Chris and I to go, yeah. what number is this? And then one of us pulls out our phone and looks at the app. Oh, well, part sweet. of the charm is the show is we both have very poor memories. Oh, yeah. Well, perfect. I'm, your, no I'm your perfect pre guest. <laughs> and no pre production time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, folks, you are hearing to Murray Valera, hearing to, you're hearing yes. the voice. I'm of, hearing to him. I'm hearing to, I'm, an, I'm adhering to Murray Valeriano, our guest. Thank you for having me. It's always fun to be be here um i see you a lot yes i only see chris probably at the festival and then every once the in a once while. or twice i do the show yep. here so i'm trying to pull a salinger okay. to become a recluse eventually <laughs> but it's hard with a family yeah so yeah, it's <laughs> weird when you're <laughs> when you can make us bunker kids you yeah. can't yeah. just yeah. <laughs> yeah uh so we should we should say this uh it is our first time filming the show yeah oh interesting so for those of you listening one of the things we want to start doing is videotaping the show and then cutting up the show into segments and putting it on um one of up. the video services. <laughs> we, could, we could say YouTube. <laughs> One of the video services. I think Aaron just pushed me out of the camera. Yeah. Pushed me out of their shot. Oh. Yeah. I don't need you. We're How many shots? This is our first one. This is experimentation for the camera. Yeah. All right. It's an indie You've film. already made a nightmare for the editor. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that Aaron also? Yeah. <laughs> no. No. This guy. Uh, no, we know Aaron's limitations. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Come on, Aaron's the heart of the Ghostbusters here. <laughs> so, so, yes. Yeah, so, those of you listening to this, we're going to start releasing uh, clips of the show on the Comedy Film Nerds YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. That does exist. That does exist. We just <laughs> we haven't, haven't updated in a while. We just haven't put any new content on it, but that's changing today. Yeah. Today. <laughs> those of you watching, hello, welcome. Those of you watching mm -hmm. on YouTube, you know, you can download this on iTunes and listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there an app? Yes, like there's a comedy film there nerds app. There is a comedy film nerds oh, app. Good. I'd uh, like to, yeah. There's also a podcast app on your iPhone or Droid phone, I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Droid. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> use their filthy <laughs> technology. Right. Is that the one that catches on fire? I is don't know. The They're all animals yeah, yeah. as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Get it on your Zoom. Yeah. I live in my uh, liberal elitist world of mm -hmm. Apple. <laughs> Wait, Zoom was the the PC version, right? It was the uh, it was the Microsoft Microsoft so, version. Yeah. yeah. It's like you know, I'm sure people are going, well, it beats the Palm Pilot. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Palm Pilot. I'll be quite honest with you. Really? I really liked it. I um, like the flip phone. I miss the flip phone. The Palm Pilot had the keyboard. I just, I really. The flip and phone, the stylus. You, could, you get a little Star oh, Trekky little Star on it. Trek. I liked it. And you never butt dialed. Mm. You That's never true. butt dialed That's anybody. True. That's true. Good point. God. All right, we should bring it back. All right. <laughs> Who's old? All three of us. Let's do it. <laughs> So we are going to talk about the 89th Academy Awards. Yes, just and all happened. the surprises. But what makes today's uh, episode special is we have someone as a guest who was actually there. I was there. Murray, yeah. your wife, Mary Zofries, was nominated for Best Costume Design for La La Land. Yes, she was nominated. This is her second Academy Award nomination, third BAFTA nomination. First, first Academy was True Grit? Yes, True Grit. What was the third BAFTA? La La Land. She, what uh, do you mean the two prior? Uh, the, uh, Catch Me If You Can. Oh, wow. True Grit and now La La Land. Man, she did Catch Me If You Can. That's yeah. awesome. And there was like Hollywood Reporter articles why, why she didn't get nominated for an Academy Award for that. I mean, there was a lot of... This is that BM before Murray. So <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just hearing it hearsay. So because I wasn't a, you know... So let's... I was still for, young and all single. Right, let's catch let's talk can. about the... Let's obviously... So, spoiler alert, there was a crazy ending. What? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. There was the what? there was an M Night Shyamalan Sur ending. Surprised all of us. Oh. Um and uh, I remember, you know, I was on the Twitter feed and it was like, "All right, no no surprise here. La La Land won best picture. All right. Good. Thanks everybody. Good night." And then the next tweet I put was WTF. <laughs> <laughs> well, right when it was going down, I I I 
tweeted, holy shit, and then my phone died. Right. So everybody was following me. was like, what? what? <laughs> Murray's dead. They got yeah. <laughs> that was Warren Beatty took him out. <laughs> so tell us about that first. What, that, okay. what the hell, and then go into sort of the whole night or whatever. But like. All right, well. Because you told, when, you, when we came into, when we just saw you, you, you know, you just, we just, right before the show, you're like, oh my God. The whole night was nuts. So the whole like, night was kind of nuts, And yeah. then you said the ending sort of... <laughs> it was just, the ending was the icing on the cake. And I, I want to preface this by saying my, my wife was nominated. That was the reason I was there, and I will not. There might be some things I can't talk about just because I don't want her to... Sure. You know what I mean? And by the way, these are all my opinions, so Scott Rudin, if you're watching, don't take it out on Mary. <laughs> Keep hiring her. <laughs> Joel Ethan... Come on. Um, so it's all me. <laughs> this is, don't blame Mary for her knucklehead husband. Exactly. And his comedian it's, mouth. All yeah, you famous exactly. producers and directors who are watching, don't pay attention <laughs> to this. <laughs> I'm sure they're on YouTube right now. Well, they've been subscribing to our YouTube channel for years. Yes. Scott mm-hmm. Rudin is. And they he watched just, the Tom Hanks interview with Dean Hagwin. Yeah, That's... yeah, from three years ago, yeah. and, they, uh, and they laugh and never hire us. Well, we had so the, anyway, we had the uh, director of uh, a really the foreign short. I forget the name of it about the TVT train. It was great. I loved it. But he was sitting at our table at the Oscar lunch and he's like, we would like Mary to do our next film. And I'm like, hire her now before she wins an Oscar and her rate goes up. And she's like, shh, don't, let's not do that. <laughs> so expect to feel of that. All right. All right. So we know what, everybody knows what happened. There was a mix up in the uh, envelope. Mm-hmm. Um, that like a high level, I just read like a high level person at Price Waterhouse is in charge of so you were saying only two I, people... From what I know, and I, I could be wrong on this, only two people have the envelopes and know who wins. And there are two envelopes for each category. There's one uh, guy stationed on the left, uh, stage left, one guy stationed on stage right for the entrances. And somehow the wrong envelope got into this guy's hand. Now, rumor has it, and I read this afterward, that he had just tweeted out something, either a picture with Emma Stone or Emma Stone looks great, and then like 30 seconds before he handed the envelope to uh, Warren Beatty. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they think he gave him the wrong one. Gave him the wrong envelope. That's a theory I read. So I can't I can't right. really so speak to, I can't really speak to that. Explain mm-hmm. it all makes sense now because Warren Beatty, when he gets the envelope, opens it and goes, um Yeah, he had the wrong one. Oh, he had the wrong yeah. one. And at first everybody thought it was a senior moment. Right. You know, and then he thought it was trying to be funny because right. you know, we, we we don't know what happened yet. And yeah. then he shows it to I always want to say Faye Angela Lansbury. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> oh, wow. Faye Dunaway would slit your throat if you made that comparison. She looks like she could kill someone with her bare hands. <laughs> Still. Still, mm-hmm. of course. She's that angry. Uh, but no, but she then sees the thing that says Emma Stone for La La Land, and she just sees La La Land and goes, La La Land. Yeah, and right. yeah. That was it. I know. And, and listen, I, I, th- I think almost everybody handled that situation really well. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't get mad at Warren Beatty because I some look, he should have... It's easy it's, to. It's, it's not his job to get yeah. the right envelope. And it's. Yeah. And yet, it would have. <laughs> sure. Would had, should he have gone? Maybe. Wait a minute, guys. We got a problem. Right. right. But like, you're asking a guy in front of uh, 2,500 people in a live theater. 30 million people are watching at home. To to oh, yeah. <laughs> to have that wherewithal to say. And, and you don't think not at a, first is like, well, I mean, I can't. They couldn't have given me the wrong envelope. Like you're right. not thinking that when you're up there presenting. Right. And he's not. And he's like, oh, but he's been in the entertainment business for so. He's not a live performer. No. Right. He doesn't. You know. I mean, when I recorded my album two years ago on iTunes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to give Warren Brady a break. I forgot. I forgot the joke that I was going to name the album about. <laughs> and I do this all the time. Right. And I had to rename my album because I didn't do the job. <laughs> so it's not, when you got all eyes on you, especially millions of people, it's mm-hmm. not that easy to, to fucking roll with the punches. They said mm-hmm. cl- 32.9 million people watched it. So that's. Right. Well, Mary's special? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. 32. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. Why, I really that's should, why I really should have done that joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I knew that many people were listening. <laughs> really blew it. That's why he works in podcasting. <laughs> if any of us had 32, 33 million people doing, watching anything we're doing, would we be here? No, we'd be in prison. <laughs> we... <laughs> All right. Chris, Chris has some interesting ideas yeah, about seriously fame. Get him out of that fame. bunker. That's why he was in favor of the O.J. Simpson doc winning. Yeah. Um, oh. So we'll yeah. talk about that. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a sec. So tell us because the whole thing with with the best picture is almost always. I didn't pick that one for winning. I picked thirteenth. I was making a joke, pal. Oh that, no! That, that, I, I, you know, for a second I thought, I, did I pick that? <laughs> I think he's right. <laughs> well, we can write off that 33 million watch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aaron, um, do you have a pen back there I could borrow? 
Um, so what do you want to start with? Best well, no, short? Well, no, I want to. I want, let's talk about what happened at the end when he announced. Because oh, yeah, yeah. Because okay, all right. Well, I I had a pr- I had they always a bring, good they always view. bring the whole cat. They always bring everyone on for best picture because it's the last award of the sure, night. So sure. they always they always have like thirty people on stage. Right. So walk us through that. Okay. Well. Um, all right. Well, we 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 went down for uh, they put us three row three rows. Uh, from the stage for Mary's category, and then they moved us back up for later. Um, for exercise. For exercise, yes. <laughs> Listen, and I wanted some exercise. It's a long show to sit through. <laughs> um, and so she got a text saying, you know, they wanted her to come down to, to on stage if it should win. And they tried that at the BAFTAs, but it didn't work out. Like, they didn't, it was like, Oh, like five minutes before the texts were going around. And, and La La Land won the BAFTA. La La Land mm-hmm. won Best Picture for the BAFTAs. Um and so she got <clears throat> Mary got a text that said, you know, come if we win, come up on stage. And she was a little hesitant about it because she does not at all <laughs> like to be in the spotlight, you know. At all, she does. She's a little, you know. So um, I'm like, honey, you know, just do it. If you if you do it, just just bolt to just do it. Especially it's if you see other people. It's the coolest thing you're ever going to be yeah, able to do. Especially if you see other people in uh, the production designers who won. Uh, they were going up on stage and they're less camera. For, you know, right. they don't like the spotlight either. So. So La La Land wins, and Mary gets up and starts going. And as soon as she starts going, man, there's the uh, I, I was kitty corner of the teleprompter, and one of the stage manager's hands just went up in the air and was like, basically like flagging down a, actually how they flag down the car in Nocturnal Animals, <laughs> just, <laughs> just kind of <laughs> pull it over. And uh, I'm like, you know, I work in television. I'm like, uh, something's up, something's up. And then. I saw one stage manager duck under and run up before the other stage manager, which I guess saw until I haven't watched it yet, but I guess another you could see the stage manager coming well, behind. Well, on TV, it's kind of mm. because you kind of see some commotion, but the shot is kind of a tight shot. I would fit, yeah, yeah. Because it's it's that tight shot that just shows that shows maybe the half a dozen people crowded around the microphone. And it's also deliberate, too, because if there is chaos going on in the wings, they don't want to sure. televise right. that. Sure. Mm-hmm. So then two or three producer or stage manager shot across the stage. And then uh, started just grabbing envelopes because Emma still had her envelope from when she won Best Actress, and the, the there was so they were collecting envelopes. They were looking for the right envelope because they had the wrong oh. envelope. So, but so it was misplaced too. It, I guess it was misplaced. That I couldn't I couldn't say. Oh, interesting. And keep in mind, I'm going off memory of chaos, right? <laughs> and a couple of martinis. So because <laughs> <laughs> Mary's award was in the first act, so I was right. at the mm-hmm. bar every commercial break. <laughs> 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 the real Academy Awards. That's right. <laughs> the husbands and wives of the nominees are just tanked at the oh, bar, yeah. boozing it up, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Oh, which is great. Last time I went, they had a cash bar during the ceremony because everybody always hangs out at the bar after their thing. So they made it a cash bar, but this year it was free. Oh, Side note. Nice. <laughs> That's probably Jimmy Kimmel's note. It probably was. <laughs> By the way, I thought he did a fantastic job this year. I gotta say, and I was not a fan. I, I, I'm very similar. I've never been. I've never thought he was that great. I've mm. always been like, I watch his show and I'm like, ah, okay, fine. I thought he was. I was not expecting him to be this good. He yeah. was great. No, he did I, a great job. He won me over. He won really? me over. Oh man, completely. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the Meryl Streep jokes. When he was basically saying all the the quotes, the tweets from from mm-hmm. Trump. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's been phoning it in for right, thirty right. years. I, I thought he did a great job. And then he handled this moment at the end very well. That's the job. I, I disagree. I think I think he dropped the ball on it. All right, how so? I think I think he should have actually him and the director should have shut down. Well, they couldn't shut down cuz they were live, but they should have just some the director should have got on the talk back. So ladies and gentlemen, we need to hold for one second. Please just hold for one second. We have a problem. That would have that would have Settled everybody down because I think Moonlight got overshadowed. It's still getting overshadowed. Right. And the poor guy, the director who who started speaking, you didn't hear the first half of it because everybody's like, oh, right, so right. you're getting overshadowed this great movie, which I think should be in the spotlight. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's where I that's where I feel Jimmy could have handled it better. And at least the director needed to just to get on the talk back and, and just calm the water. It's like, you know, following somebody who's killing on stage. The MC comes up, settles the water, right. gets them ready for the next. Somebody should have yeah. come up. All right, here's what happened. You know, and w- whether Jordan, and Jordan Horowitz is a great guy, whether he jumped the gun to mm-hmm. come out and kind of save everything, w- w- did he act too fast? Or so Jordan is the producer of La Jordan is the producer of La La Land. Jordan Horowitz, I believe, is his name. So, but I- the other producer had to get up after he knew Right. That's the mm-hmm. problem. Fred and Fred's a nice guy, but he had he's like 
I watched a little cl- of one clip of it this morning before I came on your show. And Fred, like, he knows, but they're like, get up there, talk, talk. And again, so what do you do? I mean, I, you're, you're like, like you're, you're getting to talk. You're on you live you really didn't win. television, you, yeah, and he ended do? his speech with, by the way, we didn't win. Right. So, so then when, when all this is going on, and then they announce when Jordan says, guys, we didn't win, and then mm-hmm. shows the card. Yeah. And then the whole everyone kind of goes, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. So then what ha- Like, what was the vibe in the theater? Because it was hard to get a sense of that from the TV. It was every everybody was just. I had, there were two uh, journalists from the LA Times next to me who I'd just gotten into a fight with, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> did you call them fake news? <laughs> I almost did. <laughs> well, the problem was they were tweeting through the whole show. Mm-hmm. They were tweeting through the whole show, like the first, and then they left. They left for most of it, and mm-hmm. then I was just being my snarky comedy self. I'm like, I took a picture. I'm like, hey, these guys tweeted through the whole show, just kind of goofing on them, and then they just. You can't take our picture. That's not. I don't give you permission to take our picture. I'm <laughs> oh, like, fuck well, you, wait, journalist. And I, and I don't even know their. I don't even know their live. I don't even know their television broadcast. Journalist, yeah. And that's exactly. <laughs> I'm like, did you see the? Did you see the sign yeah. that says when you walk into this, your picture will be taken? Yeah. And they're like, this is bullshit. And I go, well, you've been tweeting through the whole show, and it's kind of a drag, man. And he's like, well, we're journalists. I'm like, well, who are you journalists for? L.A. Times. And then like that, like they freaked out. And this was during the commercial break. Mm-hmm. Right before Best Picture, and they they, <laughs> they were call, they were and they were like freaking out. I mean, I was just being a sarcastic comic, you know. Like, and they freaked out, so I had to like calm the waters, you know. Like, all right, it's fine, whatever. It's cool. I won't tweet it out. It's or quite whatever. an evening for you. Yeah, it was a fun night. <laughs> <laughs> so that so as soon as that happened, everybody was like, oh, and I'm like, now you can tweet. <laughs> you said that to him. Yeah, you should have been saving up for this. Yeah, exactly. But you know, I, I so I mean, everybody I, was just like, it was. You know, oh, yeah, the, everybody was on a device. Everybody was on a device. People were like, what? What's going on? Some yeah. people are still confused. Yeah. Warren Beatty's probably still confused. Yeah, I, I think um, Jimmy Kimmel, he could have taken a little bit more control of it for mm-hmm. sure at the end. But the thing about Jimmy Kimmel is, I disagree. I don't think he did an amazing job for this Oscars. I've really felt like, now, he didn't do horrible. I thought right. he was like right in the middle. Okay. Like he was like, I'm like, okay, we did a decent job. I really felt like it was, he was trying to channel Billy Crystal. They really, it really felt there was a concentrated effort this Oscars to do. Well, we want it to be funny, but not too edgy. We want it to be really middle of the road. It really felt that way from the bits to the monologues to everything where there was like nothing was too mean. Nothing was too biting, but also too political. Uh, nothing was yeah. too political. I, I noticed really, it wasn't I, very I really felt like everything was deliberately. It really felt calculatingly down the middle for the entire show. Well, I think, you know, I think last year with the Oscars so white right. and then having Chris Rock, who that's Chris Rock's bread and butter right. and social commentary. It was a deliberate um uh, kind of a not a course correction, but a deliberate, di- a deliberate different direction for this year. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I that was obvious, and they were also it seems like trying to say, hey, regular America, many of you that maybe vote for Trump and and hate us Hollywood elitists, we're going to bring a tour bus of you in here, and we're going to drop candy from the sky. It felt very much like pandering. <laughs> well, yeah, it did feel like a little pandering, like because yeah. because that's the thing is is. You know, the Hollywood, you know, most of them are liberals, but you have working class people going. Uh, no, Mel Gibson was there. Yeah, I know. That was, well, why the fuck was he there? But like most of them are. Yeah, most get of to them hang out with me. Casey Affleck and yeah. get tips off each other. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> two awful humans. Absolutely. Um, but like that's part of the thing is you hear this of like, you know, working class people saying, so these these Hollywood millionaires are telling me I need to be more liberal. Are they? Uh, is Charlize Theron not wearing forty thousand dollars in diamonds to help poor people? Like uh, that's the thing. It, it it's it, so that criticism has come up a lot. It comes up a lot every year when you watch this. Sure. But then that to me felt like they were trying to address that. I actually liked the the dropping of the candy, and I liked bringing the tour bus. That was the, that was the best moment of the Oscars when it was like, "Who's your favorite actor? That man right there." She points yeah, at Denzel no. Washington. Yeah. I think my favorite was the the bit that I thought really worked well was the uh, the stuff with Matt Damon because he's such a great sport. It was that such was a great runner, I that man. Was really, really funny. It, really, but well, that's from their show. Like they have this ongoing. And I, and, yeah, but and he set funny, it up. But, that, but he set it up. What good enough? Yeah, absolutely. He, he, Even if you don't watch the yeah, show, you know. Which but, I don't. And it was that kind of thing too. Where it's like, well, why aren't there more fun, more thought out jokes like that in the entire show? Like I felt like that bit specifically stood out more than everything else. Because you have people like Viola Davis who take themselves way too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? There are a lot of uptight people there. No offense to Viola, but I thought her speech was a little, aren't we great? We need to, you know, uh, as actors. 
Um, but there's just too many uptight people there, man. They're, they're all uptight. You could, you could tell that was like it was like all right, look, you know, let's let's tone it down a little bit. I mean, no matter how bad you do, you're still going to do better than James Franco and Anne Hathaway. That was the last that, time I was there. That doesn't it doesn't oh, matter. The awful. host is still going to do better. <laughs> that was better awful. Than that. Um, you know, every other host since then and before then has actually tried. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, but you you feel like too, it's like it's such a. Th uh, um, a a, a line to it was like a tightrope it's you know billy crystal but then you also have like david letterman who i thought was really funny when he I hosted thought he the was Oscars. great and uh, people hated him i know they're I thin skin. like they, they yeah. can hollywood can handle the like um oh the 60 year old producer with the 20 year old girlfriend they can handle yeah, yeah. those jokes but they mm -hmm. can't handle the like hey some of you are rich dicks they <laughs> yeah. can't handle that it's like no wait why you know i drive a prius to my private jet right. yeah. <laughs> good for you you know like they can't handle that i'm so, buying a prius jet yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like they so they the, and and a big part of that night is there's some cool aspects to it, but then there's always this this self congratulatory stuff that's like right, and they do take themselves way too seriously. Yeah, at time. it is a it I is mean, a stroke I, fest. I, I tweeted too. It's like after like the first monologue, he's like, all right, he's he's. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel is so inoffensive that they've already booked him for next year. Like, <laughs> right. you know, like halfway through, you know, he was rebooked. So, but Jimmy Kimmel is inoffensive yeah. on his show. You know, mm -hmm. one thing I don't like about Jimmy Kimmel is as a presenter not as a person on his show is remember during the debates when ken bone asked the question i, I turned to my wife i go 10 bucks he's on jimmy kimmel tomorrow night right and he was on jimmy kimmel like in two nights like he mm -hmm. just scours the internet you know when when the lion uh was shot he gave a monologue about it and cry like anything that's hot on the end that's right. what he does it's a lot of content to fill in a strip show i understand i understand <laughs> but you know whether, whether, whether you like Jimmy Fallon or not, he, he that's Jimmy Fallon. That's all. He's always been a goofy suck up. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? And now Colbert's finally found his footing. He's number one now in the slot. Mm -hmm. He beat out Fallon. Fallon went down to three after mm -hmm. the Trump incident. So I don't know why. I work in late night. Sorry. <laughs> we go and turn this into the go late night this. film nerds. I want to go back to this, though. So then after Moonlight is the winner and moonlight comes sure. on stage, I'm trying to see this on TV, but I couldn't really. So, like, because it's almost like. La La Land people were sort of off to the side, and were they like physically just handing their Oscars over? Um, I'll, I'll, I had my wife. It's not my like wife they have booked. extras. Yeah, yeah. My wife, she like saw it, like she made it to the stage because mm -hmm. she, she, you know, she did. She was smart. She was trying to go up in between speeches, and there's three producers, so she got to. I think she got up during. Uh, well, in between speeches for that, that must have been like six chances. Yeah. <laughs> so she got up. I forget. She got up probably right during. I think Fred spoke last. So uh -huh. she probably got up right when Fred spoke last. And then George's like, "We didn't win." And she was like, "Later." Yeah. <laughs> and she just ducked off stage. Apparently, I haven't seen. I think Aaron told me that. Well, you were at the bar. Yeah, I was at the yeah, bar. Yeah. I didn't actually see any of this. <laughs> yeah. I'm just reading. I'm just reading your guys' tweets. <laughs> so she ducked off, and then. Uh, yeah, like I, I like again. It's a shame, and I talked about this a lot with my wife. Is like the directors, like I don't know how it played on television. I haven't seen it yet, but no, mm. but I didn't hear the first thing he's like the first minute and a half of his speech or whatever because right. everybody was talking murmuring. and murmuring and that's Barry where Jenkins you mean when he was giving his speech for after winning Moonlight yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But, but when the camera stopped rolling and the show was over was there like a lot of chaotic milling around and like what just happened like actually in the showroom there was a lot of like holy shit we are here on a historic night and it really to be honest with you bummed a lot of people out oh, like wow. we didn't <laughs> this, could, this could be the most this could be the most the humble is could this even be a humble bread like we didn't even go to the elton john party we we're like fuck let's just go you know what i mean well, it was I, just a bummer of a night well because mm -hmm. yeah it's got to be you know la la land had a nice night they've had a nice sure they've had yeah, a nice sure. awards run absolutely so but th there is i don't care who you are if I put a gold trophy in your hands right. and then pull it away five, two minutes later, yeah. whatever, there's going to be an emotional reaction. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> you got to gotta think of. I mean, these, you, you got to, these, and these aren't, you know, people who just got. These are filmmakers. These right. are, you know, this mm -hmm. is Damien's thirty. You know, him and the music supervisor went to college together, mm -hmm. so they get to. Yeah. He's sharing this with his best friend, and right. you know, people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people took a lot of chances on this. I sound like their PR person. <laughs> people <laughs> <laughs> took a lot of chances on this movie, and it did really well, whether you like it or not. Let and me turn it, the page on the press release. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced Chazelle. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, then it's like, 
Yeah, right. you know what? No. And then you got to wear that on the head in front of 39 million people. Right. So, right. you know, also plus the... you've also just emoted your speech, which is not probably not easy. But I, yeah. I, I will say, like, Jordan. I, I, they handled it really well considering all those they things. They handled it well. Sure. And then, mm-hmm. and then Barry Jenkins, I thought, handled it really well saying, the La La Land guys are a class act. We've been traveling around with them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. But I want to I wanna actually talk about this because I, I finally saw Moonlight last night. 